Hey guys, welcome back. So I already had this Asus GTX 260 and at some point I picked up another one. Uh, this is an XFX model and uh, naturally the end result here is going to be SLI. Now SLI as well as Crossfire has unfortunately or fortunately I guess depending on how you see it uh, is really no longer relevant but it did have a time when it was a great alternative and uh, still useful on older systems I think. I've seen a lot of videos regarding SLI and most of them portray horrific experiences but the one thing that they all seem to have in common is Windows 10. The experience seems to be much better if you're using either Windows Vista or in our case today uh, Windows 7. The test system that we have set up is an ASUS Sabertooth 990FX motherboard with an AMD FX8350 CPU. We have 8GB of DDR3 at 1866 and Windows 7 Service Pack 1 on a 256GB SSD. And all the games are installed on a 1TB hard drive. And also for data, I'm going to be using a software that I came across called CapFrame X, which is uh, really pretty impressive. And uh, I'm going to leave a link down below to their page if you want to try it out. So first up, I'm going to run 3 Mark Vantage uh, just to test to make sure SLI is actually working properly. And we can see that it is, so uh, we're moving on to the games. All games today are going to be run at 1080p with the highest settings possible, uh, unless specified otherwise. And I did do a test with SLI with and without the bridge using Alan Wake's American Nightmare on uh, the high preset. And you can see the difference here in FPS and frame time, so uh, yeah, using a bridge is definitely the preferred option. All right, so in Bioshock, you can see very good and consistent use of both GPUs, and uh, we had an average FPS of 284, 1% uh, 0.1% lows of 182 and 141 respectively. Frame times were good, so SLI is definitely a win with Bioshock. In Left 4 Dead 2, there's also excellent utilization of both GPUs and uh, average FPS of 162. 1% and 0.1% lows were 76 and 59, which is not ideal, but uh, gameplay was excellent, so another instance where SLI works well. Tomb Raider did pretty well overall. We had an average FPS of 79. However, lows were 35 and 23. There was indeed a bit of stutter, but I'm pretty sure it was, was not SLI related. Uh, it was more likely VRAM. This section of the frame time graph correlates with this portion of the capture where it really stood out, but overall the gameplay was really good. The FPS did vary quite a bit though, depending on what was being displayed at any given time on the screen. Fear was excellent with SLI. Uh, our average FPS was 209, uh, but the data for lows is extremely deceiving. This is a tough game to benchmark for any period of time due to the auto saves and cutscenes that will really screw with your data. Um, if we take a look at the frame time graph, it's pretty easy to make out where the auto save and a cutscene is. The actual gameplay though was excellent. Far Cry also had very good GPU utilization and we had an average FPS at 209. Lows were 109 68 and gameplay was very smooth. And for Far Cry 2, I just ran the benchmark, and again, both GPUs worked well, and we did manage to get an average FPS of 117. In Dusex Human Revolution, our average FPS was 114, lows were 47 and 35. Um, it was a little stuttery, but 
uh, no more so than with a single GPU, but we did have uh, almost double the performance with a single GPU. So, so this game with SLI is a very good combination. In Fear 2, again, we use both GPUs very well. Uh, frame times are excellent with an average FPS of 129. This is yet another game where uh, auto saves and info that pops up on a screen will really mess with your data. So uh, it's tough to log a decent length run on here as well. So that's why I'm just giving the average. And using SLI with Crisis was like, well, it was just like Crisis without SLI, only with better performance. Uh, running at 1080p with medium settings and uh, very high texture and water details, uh, we did have AA and motion blur turned off, and our average FPS is 62. One game that was very disappointing, however, was uh, GTA V. At 1080p with the normal settings, uh, here you can see the abysmal performance we had with SLI enabled. And here you can see the dramatic difference with SLI disabled. And for whatever reason, uh, I couldn't manage to capture any data on Half-Life 2 with Cap Frame X. So I just used Afterburner and uh, not much to say except excellent performance with SLI. And Hitman Blood Money is a good example of SLI not quite working out for the best. Uh, the GPU usage and syncing wasn't ideal. Although I'm sure there was also one CPU core sitting at 100% as well. And uh, this graph here shows pretty much what it felt like to play the game. And while it wasn't terrible, it just didn't feel as smooth as you would want it to. There was not much in the way of large stutters, but just a constant, uh, almost like a micro stuttering that you don't even see, but you can definitely feel it as you move around the game. And next up we have Tomb Raider Underworld, and uh, this game is pretty much what you would want all your games to be like with SLI. We had excellent use of both GPUs and an average FPS of 146, and uh, this is just another great example of SLI working well. But CSGO, that was not a good experience at all. The game would crash about 30 seconds in every time, but that was enough time for us to get some data just to show how bad the experience really was using SLI. Now this game I saved for last so that we could look at it in a little more detail. This is Stalker Call of Pripyat with the X-Ray engine. It's uh, notoriously stuttery and it greatly benefits from enabling V-Sync, uh, despite the fact that the game caps at 60 FPS. The first graph that we have here is a 60 second shot with SLI enabled and V-Sync off and uh, that's definitely not what you want to see. Our average FPS was 55 with 1% and 0.1% lows of 30 and 5. With V-Sync on, however, it looks drastically different and for the better, with the average and the 1% lows are now 60 and the 0.1% low is 20. And if we look at the entire run graphed out, you can see there's still some stutter, but in between it's very smooth. And uh, just to show that this is not an SLI issue, but more so the game engine, here's the same run with SLI disabled and V-Sync on. The GPU utilization is also surprisingly low, but it's consistent, so uh, I would say SLI does work very well. Uh, considering the issues with this game engine. So while it may no longer be relevant in 2021, uh, it's still a lot of fun on older systems and it's a great alternative to the still very expensive flagship cards of the day. So hopefully somebody found this interesting. Uh, 
You guys take care, and as always, I will see you soon.